Crooked Tuna Real Talk. You just saw the new episode of Wicked Tuna. Now it's time for Wicked Tuna Real Talk, where some of the best bluefin captains in the business discuss this week of fishing. I'm your host, Mike Salk, and good to be with you. Joining us this time, Captain Dave Marciano of the Hard Merchandise, Captain Paul Cheney of Drama, making his first appearance, Captain Tyler McLaughlin of the Pinwheel, and Captain Dave Carrero of Fishing Vessel. Tuna.com, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, look, Lot to get to this week, a lot to talk about. The fleet's got a new leader. One captain definitely lost his cool and maybe even his mate. And one boat bowed out of the competition after a nightmare, nightmare season. In the opening of this latest episode, we saw Captain Dave Carrero and deckhand Jordy Sosa rowing fish fishing vessel tuna.com past hard merchandise. Is that how bad it's gotten? Let's take a look. Hey, look. Hey, Dave, check it out. It's not calm. <laughs> This wake of a Marciano really can't push the limits. He's got the old Humpty Dumpty boat just kind of putting along at eight knots. My boat goes faster in idle than Marciano's does at top speed. Those guys up too. <laughs> that was good. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. He's going over. He's going over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> Those guys. Well, you know, Dave was just goofing around. He had to drive by real close to show us that his boat is basically twice as fast as this one. Marciano, your boat has been the butt of jokes this season. I don't know why everybody's decided this is the year to start taking shots at you, but we saw... Dave rowing past you. They called your boat the Humpty Dumpty. They said that you've got old technology. Yeah, yeah, they basically yeah. called you past your prime, and yet here you are in first place by the end of the episode. Vindication? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, old school rules, right? Some things you don't need to change, all right? It's not that I'm anti-technology, but at the end of the day, stuff costs money. The more money you put into the boat, the less money you get to bring home. The boat's adequate, it does its job, it's safe, that's what's important. And you know, hey, sure, in a perfect world, I'd like to have a nice fancy boat, but you know what, that boat's mine. I got it the old school way, I work for it, little at a time, and she gets the job done. And, and it's nothing new, you know, we've always been labeled, you know, we're the first boat out and we're the last boat home because we're the slowest boat in the fleet. So that's how it is, but you know what, I don't mind getting up early. Time is the one thing you can still get for free. Put a couple thousand pounds of tuna on there and maybe it moves even slower. And I That's bet you'd be, right. well, be just fine with that. The smiles get a lot bigger. That's you know? exactly <laughs> right. Dave, you've spent a lot of time this year, you know, worried about Tyler, TJ, et cetera. But, you know, I don't hear you worrying all that much about the hard merchandise. And yet we look up today at this stage right at the end. Here he is ahead of you. <laughs> the word hubris comes to mind. How do you, how do you feel about, uh, about Marciano being ahead of you? Hey, I, I, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I always say I don't believe in luck, but you know what? I'm starting to believe in miracles. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> oh, this guy's okay. a great fisherman, man. Did you underestimate him? Have you? Yeah, I, no, I, I know he's caught fish in the past, and you know, I know he's going to catch him in the future, and right now uh, is his time. You're sort of a technology guy, right? I mean, we know sure. what you do for a living. You're a pilot. You deal with a lot of technology yeah. in the air. you got all the fanciest stuff on your boat. So uh, what's the relationship between technology and the ability to catch fish? Hey, technology. I'm going to use it to my advantage. You know, that's, that's what it's all about. I want to catch as many fish as I can. Ultimately, catch the most fish, you're going to make the most money. Tyler, uh, any surprise to you to see Dave uh, Marciano where he's at at this point? Absolutely not. The guy's a phenomenal fisherman. He's been for years. I grew up as 10, 12, 15, 16 years old hearing his name over and over again. You know, he didn't get to tuna fish as much as he wanted to because he was gill netting. But when he went tuna fishing, he'd put his head to doing it, he caught him. And even when I used to work for TJ, we used to listen to Marciano's got him on on the radio all the time. I mean, he, the guy's the real deal. I mean, you know, he's got a slow boat. I mean, I'm only two knots quicker. I'm 10 knots. He's eight knots, eight and a half. I mean, it's. We have boats that get us to the grounds, you know, we leave earlier than everyone, we come in later than everyone. And that's always been our style, and that's why I've always kind of looked up to Hard Merch. Marciano, I think people like to throw the word underdog around and talking about you and your crew and your boat. Do you like that term, or is it an insult for you? No, look, you know, it, it, it is what it is. The boat's nothing special, but I make it work, right? And like Tyler was saying, a slow boat, it's economically viable, right? We can catch them as cheaply as possible. That's one thing, too, that works in our favor. Even if you do catch a less fish, 
I'm putting more money in my pocket. Hey, one thing is true about speed. Speed costs money. Bigger <laughs> engine, bigger horsepower, bigger fuel bill. Speed costs money. There's no way around that. And again, I'll said it before. I don't mind getting out of bed at midnight, you know, and Dave, you know, gets out of bed at five o'clock and blows by us just before sunrise. <laughs> but you know what? Oh, that's just more money I'm putting in my pocket. You, you can't know, help but think of the tortoise and the hare as Dave yeah. is racing past you and you're <laughs> yeah. slow and steady, just kind of making your way out there. Right. Can slow and steady win this race this year? Dude, look, not for I, nothing. I, I don't know, because look, I'll admit too, speed is an edge, without a doubt. Especially in certain situations, the bike goes off, we hear about it, you need to get somewhere. That's where a guy like Dave has a huge edge over me. He's gonna get there and maybe get fish that I won't get, or maybe get more fish than I can get because he got there first. That's definitely an edge, you know, without a doubt. But, again, I've been doing this a long time and I don't do it to be on first. I do it to do as good, well as I can for myself and my family. And if we wind up on top, well, so be it. Hard merchandise, as we know, is having their best season ever. But for the new boat drama, it all came to a crashing halt this week. For the first nine weeks of the season, Captain Paul Chini and his guys had not caught a single tuna. And if they didn't catch one this week, they knew they could not afford to fish any longer. The final trip ended with the boat breaking down and the guys even further in the red with an expensive tow. Let's see how it happened. We came all the way to Platts, about 60 miles from Gloucester. Going on one last fishing trip, this is our Hail Mary Pass. Oh. What the f is that? Is it going to Yep, just shut it off so it doesn't get in here. Right now, we have a small issue with the boat. The pawl down below troubleshooting in it, but we need to fix quick because we need to get on the board, and we have no fish right now. Not buy fuel from that place again. <laughs> Go for it. We're stuck out at Platts and no one else is around. We're in trouble. We get a call for a tow. Socks! And we have no fish! Paul, it, uh, it didn't go well. It didn't go well for you guys this year. Your boat breaks down. That's kind of the nail in the coffin for you. How, how tough was it? How heartbreaking was it for you to hang it up for the year? To say the least, like, the worst year we've ever had. Like, I don't know how much more bad luck we could have. What was your best I year? I mean... Don't um, ever say that. Don't ever yeah, say it. I be, hope it was it my worst get any year worse, ever. Because it, it always no, will, man. It always will. You've heard of Murphy's Law, right? I know, I know. <laughs> we, I, have a, I had an awesome crew this year. I mean, we tried, we went out, we lost a ton of fish. Um, we broke down. We, we just had a lot of misfortune. Dave does not believe in luck. So I won't ask whether it was bad luck that doomed the drama oh. this year. But what do you think it was? Is that an experience? What happened? Bad preparation. Bad but wasn't ready to go, bro. You know what? I, I left the dock, especially when I got uh, escorted back to shore, and that was just uh, my bad. Bro, come on, man. I mean, come on. You're like older than me. You gotta have your <laughs> together when it comes out. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I, I, I watched my my guys together. almost sink this past fall. You gotta have your safety gear together. You know what? Yeah. You, when you're the captain of that boat, you're in charge of everyone that's on that boat's lives. They yeah. all look for you for guidance. Total, totally agree. You know Prior what it was? Proper we, planning we, prevents <laughs> piss poor performance. Yep, and escorts in from the Coast Guard. Yeah, that was a bad, uh, that was the bad, seven P's bad news. We call that in the business. News. I could have wagered money that Marciano had some sort of a uh, long running uh, saying just like that. <laughs> <laughs> You've got one of those for just about everything. There's a cliche, the, there's the, a the saying. The seven P's we call that. <laughs> what are they? Again, make sure I understand them. Prior proper planning, prior proper planning <laughs> prevents piss poor performance. Paul, you lost two fish. There were some other things too, though. You swapped paint with another boat at the marine. I'm just trying to walk down the list here. You didn't have enough survival oh, suits. The Coast Guard escorted you back to Gloucester, and then this week you pull out of the dock while you're still connected to shore power. <laughs> Let's see. So we're hoping for a problem-free trip. When I undo the boat, just hop right on. You don't need to spin it anywhere. Shore power, back up. You gotta be kidding me. Back up. <laughs> it's, it's never easy. Oh, story of the year. Dude, story of the year. Unplug that and bring it right around. I 
give up. <laughs> Back to square one. We're all set now. Drian, you ready? Rocking. I'll be honest, let's just forget this season. We'll work, we'll work on 2015. All right, 2015, goal Two, number one, catch a tuna. Oh. Goal, goal number, number one, one, get out of the catch a couple of tuna. Marcel, you've been doing this for the longest time of anyone in this group, so think back. What were some of the rookie mistakes you remember making? All of those. <laughs> Look, you know, it happens, man. You lose fish, it's, it's part of the learning curve. But you know what, like, you know, I talked to these guys, I was pulling for them all year, but it's, it's tuna fishing is one of those things too. You don't get it from a book. You don't learn it from any other way except to go out there and make mistakes and learn from your mistakes. And you'll get better at it as time goes on. Robotic Dave, I'm sure you never made any mistakes even as a rookie. No, 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 no. I tried a manual. gave you a manual <laughs> first. <laughs> Absolutely. What kind, of, what kind of mistakes do you remember making? I did the same thing. I pulled out of the dock with the shore power in, but unfortunately we didn't get to it in time and I, I ripped remember, the whole side out. No, really. I remember a day when the tuna.com used to be called the tuna don't come. You've come a long way since then. Please. I was like 15 or 16 when people used to call you that. And then all of a sudden when I was 20, the guy was. Well, Tyler, you, you've been doing this probably the least amount of time, it's at least in terms of a captain. I've been in the game, but as and a captain, definitely. But last week, or last year, obviously, you, the, the fish didn't exactly jump up onto the boat. Were you making Man. some close to rookie mistakes last year as well? I'd say like definitely more so, you know, the fishing was tough. My health wasn't so good, and I had new mates. So I had everything stacked against me. You have I'm new mates every year. Yeah, but you know what? I had new mates I had never fished before. You know, I have my friends that I have grew up fishing with because I've been fishing for a long time, yeah. and I've been catching fish for a long time. So I have kids that come with me from various points. I brought two brand new kids on the boat, and in a very tough year, you know what? Didn't work out in my favor. But I'll tell you what, when there was fish around this past summer like there were, I put them across the dock. And that's yeah. what matters. Are we going to see you back there next year? Are we, are we, are you going to be able to regroup? I am going to go back. I'm going back with the same crew. I love that's the guys. Um, I First step, boat driving school. I can't, like, talk how well they did. You know what I mean? I can't talk enough about how well they did. And, uh, yeah, I messed up a lot this year. I'm coming back. And, uh, and hopefully I redeem myself. We'll see what happens. Are those guys willing to get back out there with you? I hope so. Uh, I, I gotta uh, talk them into it first. Uh, I mean, I gotta cool talk guys? them into so coming back. Up the percentage a little bit. I'm sure they'll yeah, jump right yeah, out exactly. there. Yeah, exactly. Percentage of what? Zero percent of zero is zero. Right. Let's, let's zero. calm down over there. <laughs> like, Leave the poor guy alone. Let's move on. All right, let's get back to your boat, Tyler. On the pinwheel this week, things were uh, interesting, I guess. Let's say That's tense. the only way they should be. All right, Tyler and Travis lost a fish early in the week when Travis drove over the fishing line. And then when they hooked up again later in the week, Travis was struggling on the wheel. Tyler, let's say he lost his cool, but he definitely pushed him to the ground. Here's how it looked. Try to be a neutral. You just don't mind going behind the boat, you dumbass. Forward. Turn it around that way. Put your bow that way. Turn that way, now. You want it in gear? Get the out of my way. I'll show you how to kill a tuna fish. Tyler, now after you finally landed the fish by yourself, after pushing, how old is he, 14, 15 years old? You pushed the poor guy to the ground, it was he, sad. He's like, he's like 19. It's like nearing child abuse. In any event, you oh, pushed yeah. the poor guy to the ground, it was terrible. <laughs> Whatever, he wants to be this all-star, we're gonna mold you into an all-star. You didn't really seem all that upset, or you said you were sorry, but you didn't really seem all that sorry. Were you sorry? No, you know, because one thing, you know, Travis had been molding them all season, and he's talking a big game, so you gotta back that game up. And he ain't backing it up when he comes to driving the boat and we're fighting fish. You know, you're making the wrong decisions, this is costing us money. You know, it's already added stress without us having David, so it's very important that we catch every fish we can. You know, we're in a tight competition. I have a lot to prove after what happened to me in the previous season. So I, I can't afford to lose a fish because of Travis's inexperience. Would you have handled it the same way if you could do it again? Absolutely, freaking Lily, get out of my way. We gotta catch the fish. Did the fish end up on the deck? Yeah. Did the check get cashed? Yeah. Did Travis get paid? Yeah. I'm pretty sure everyone was happy with the end result. Well, that's a short term line of thinking. Is there a long term view that if you keep pushing too many mates, eventually they're gonna say, no, thank you, even though I've caught a fish and not here to be abused? Nah, there's plenty of them to come. So you just, no worries about it. Hey, if he's leaving, just change you just, mates. You change just bring mates. the next change one mates. Mates. Listen, there man, you go. See, there's a big difference between there you and I. I know how to catch a bluefin tuna, and yeah. I don't care who's on my back deck, we're gonna get it done. You, Some years are tougher than others, but I'll tell you what. You switch mates year every out, year. Year in, year out. You know what? I'm gonna be in that top five percent. There's the a reason for that. Well, oh, I don't doubt that. But yeah. you know what? My boat, my way, and I go out to yeah. sea for a reason because I there like being out to sea and I like being out there in the ocean. If I want to work on land and get along with people, I take a beach job. But that ain't there me, man. Go. 
You know yeah. I mean? Some well, people it's pack it in when, when you hear the, the veteran guys in the fleet talk, I hear over and over again how important chemistry is. Dave, I know, talks all about the chemistry with Sandro. I, I know Marciano talks about the chemistry within his family. Uh, and yet you seem to say, hey, whatever, one mate's is the same as the next. If I didn't come from fishing in a center console in my 20s like and catching like fish by myself all the time, then I'd probably think like that. But for me, I'm still youthful enough where I feel I can catch them by myself. Will I lose some because of that? Absolutely. But I still feel at the end of the day, I, if I were to fish by myself for a whole season, I would still turn a profit. I mean, it's a freaking tuna fish. We all understand the patterns. We all understand how to catch them. If you play them out long enough, you're going to get them. If you want to try and get them quick and have them be all erratic at the boat, you're going to lose a lot of fish, and that's where that second guy could help you. Well, Dave, you've pushed Tyler this year. Now, we've seen Tyler push a mate. <laughs> what did you make of what happened on that boat? He should have hit him with a poly ball. <laughs> I wanted to do your voodoo. <laughs> That's what I would have done. You think he uh, did the right thing? Him make yeah, you don't push your mates, but you know no. he did what he did. It's in the heat of the moment, and you know people. You've react. never pushed someone out of the way. You give me no, that harpoon. No, no. Give me no, that gas. No. Never, never. Uh, Catching a really fish is different have, than like uh, you're dealing with humans. You know, you're dealing with people. You know what I mean? You know, I would, I wouldn't do that for for a tuna fish. I don't think right now. I know it's my livelihood and you, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, but listen, but, you got to do uh, something real quick to get yeah, a tuna fish. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hurt one of my friends or my mates or someone that works for me. It's just. Just I'll tell you one thing, I don't that's not yeah, the first thing I've It's not like they're really people at all. Yeah. Yeah. They're just right. deckhands, dude. They're disposable. <laughs> now, Marciano, in your case, I mean, you were, what, three, four times the size of Jay? I mean, it just wouldn't uh, be right. So I no, assume no, there's it, been no it, pushing on your boat. It, 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 it wouldn't, and, uh, you know, again, but I'm not immune to losing my temper, right? I'm not going to sit here and, you know, call the kettle black, you know what I mean? I've made mistakes. I've had my share of blow-ups. I try not to let it happen, and you know, it, but Tyler's right though. It's his boat, his way, to a certain extent. You know, he's right like that, and you know, none of us are perfect. I think, you know, I think we can all admit that, right? No, we all I'm not lose perfect. our top. You know, I think snap. at the end of the day, little Travis, he totally understands that. You know, like what I'm doing, what I'm trying to get him to do is the right thing. I didn't get to where I am for no reason. I'm not like what I'm doing, what I'm doing in the fishery for no reason. So I think he gets it, you know, yet. Yeah. And when we talk about it, you know, he reflected, yeah, I understand I'm moving the boat the wrong way. I didn't factor in the tide and the wind. And he's gonna learn. It's just, we're so intense at this point in the season and the fish are worth so much money that every single fish counts. I can't afford to lose one. Well, you say that, and you say that he's feeling better about it, and certainly you don't feel a lot of remorse for the way things went, but we also got to see what happened at the weigh-in, and I don't know that I would say Travis looked like he was entirely over it. Let's all watch together. Take care of my baby here. This is a beautiful fish right here. I don't care what it weighs, as long as you get paid and I don't have to quit. I don't want to quit. I don't want to leave this boat. I earned this job. But if I keep getting pushed around, I'm out of here. Dude, I wouldn't let you quit. I'd just throw you over. You almost did. You don't let your mates walk away. They learned all the secrets. Got to throw them over. This is too good of a year. I expect everyone to be like on my level, and obviously that's not going to be the case right away. Travis is just getting broken into this type of fishing. I freak out, but you know what? The most important thing is getting the fish. Well, you know, the 7-Eleven down the streets had like 19 different cashiers <laughs> in the last three months. So the back deck of the pinwheels had eight or nine mates. <laughs> so in you're doing better years. than the local 7-Eleven. <laughs> so you know we're doing there okay you there. You know, oh, sorry, there. It's just, it's just like a shoving money. match in the local Man. schoolyard anyway, you know what I mean? It's just like <laughs> two kids at the playground who can't get along with each other. Are you worried, Tyler, that he'll walk away? You know what? I mean, I know Travis loves fishing. It's in his heart. It's in his blood. I know at the end of the day he's got to deal with my <laughs> and there's a lot to it. But he wants to catch fish, and he's happy where he's at. And I know he'll be there when I need him. Can you repair that relationship? Do you need to repair that relationship? I definitely need to repair that relationship. I mean, I'm under a lot of stress. We lost David. David was my ace in the hole. I all of a sudden am now putting all that pressure right on Travis. So you know what? He's got a big shoes to fill, and this is a new fishery to him. He's not done this before. So I'm putting a lot of pressure on him. He's at his breaking point. I'm at my breaking point. We're in a big competition here, and we're making good money this season. So you know what, I think I need to focus on our, my relationship with Travis and everything's gonna be okay. All right guys, thank you so much. That's Wicked Tuna Real Talk for this week. Wanna give a big thank you to Captain Dave Marciano of the Hard Merchandise, Captain Paul Chini of Drama, Captain Tyler McLaughlin of Pinwheel, and Captain Dave Carrero of FishingVesselTuna.com. Good to be with all you guys. To catch all the Real Talk episodes, go to NatGeoTV.com slash Real Talk. We're gonna have another installment right after the all new episode of Wicked Tuna next Sunday, 9 p.m. on National Geographic Channel. You know where to find it. Tyler's gonna be back again next week. Also gonna have Captain Paul Ebert of Kellyanne, Captain TJ Ott of the Hot Tuna as well. Talk about the new episode where TJ helps out a boat in need and a deckhand has the fish fight of his life. Don't forget, you can get a daily Wicked Tuna Fix by liking us on Facebook or following us on Twitter. We'll see you next time for Wicked Tuna Real Talk.